So creating a mask uh, in Illustrator or Photoshop is relatively easy, but it involves a lot of steps. And what if we want to make these masks on the fly? Maybe we want them to be randomized or have some kind of user input, or maybe they're um, driven by some kind of data or something like that. Um, and it also involves uploading a, another image file. So um, we can actually generate our masks all within P5.js um, and then apply them to photographs. So I've gone ahead again and um, uploaded this kitty image. You know, maybe we're you're more of a cat person than a dog person, so we've got some cats going here. Um, we need to then create another variable, and I'm going to call this mask. And mask is going to be this blank uh, sort of image that we're going to generate all within P5.js. Um, and to do that, I'm going to go down here. So I, you know, I've already loaded the kitty image and all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and create the mask. And to do this, um, we're using this object called, uh, or feature of P5.js called graphics. And um, if you've used the processing version, this is called pgraphics. Um, and graphics is basically like, you know, when we run our, our sketch, if you remember, this creates this canvas object that we're drawing stuff to. It basically creates another invisible canvas in memory, in our computer's memory, that lets us draw shapes and all kinds of stuff. Anything that we can do within the regular canvas, we can actually do in this separate object. Um, and the reason this is helpful uh, this is a great example where we want to create this kind of like mask image and then apply it to this photograph, but we wouldn't want to have to see that in the pro in our regular canvas. Um, and there's other times when this separate graphics context is actually really, really helpful. Um, and then to, so to do this, we say mask. So remember, I created mask as a variable up here. Mask equals create graphics, and then we specify the size. And in this case, I want it to be the same size as my image. Um, so this creates it. Um, before now, you know, uh, P5.js doesn't know what mask is. And then um, all of our drawing commands are going to start with mask dot whatever. So if I want to, for example, I have no stroke, I say mask dot no stroke. If I just do no stroke, by default, this command is going to apply to our normal canvas not to the mask. So we need to tell P5.js, hey, we want to do no stroke in this separate graphics context. Mask.no stroke, I'm going to say mask.fill. So when we create our mask, remember anything that's filled in is going to be, uh, that's opaque, is going to let our pixels show through and anything transparent is going to be our background that gets deleted. So mask.fill, the color actually doesn't matter. I'm going to make it white mask.circle, and then let's just do a simple circle for now. So I'm going to, or a simple mask just with, um, you know, a circle. So I'm going to do mask.width divided by two, mask.height divided by two, and 150 pixels. Now, if I run this, I'm not going to see anything. What do I have here? Mask.width. Oop. It's my kitty. Ah, oops. Stupid. Um, I had kept IMG from an example before. Um, the name of our variable is uh, kitty. So it's saying it can't find the width, which I was trying to access here, uh, because I hadn't actually loaded the image yet. So now it should work. Let's see. Cool. Good. And nothing happens. And the reason is that um, I've just created this mask um, image, but it's not being displayed anywhere. If we wanted to see it, we can actually do something like this. And that's our mask. But what we want to do is then use this to mask that kitty image. So we could say kitty.mask, just like before, and pass in this mask object to it. And then uh, we can draw it. Now, I want to be able to place, so we're going to do, um, it's kind of stupid, I guess, but we're going to do, let's do a, a cat moon and puppy stars. That seems like a nice thing to do. Um, but if I want to be able to place this circle, um, you know, the, anyway, yeah, there's a, a, a bunch of different ways we can do this. The circle draws from the center X and Y, but if you remember rectangles like images draw from the upper left corner, um, which is going to make it a little harder for us to place it where we want. So I can say image mode center, center needs to be all in caps. 
And this is going to make images draw from the center point and a width and height. So they work just like circles and ellipses. So now I can say image kitty and we can put it right. Uh, let's do kind of up there. That looks good. So here's my cute little cat face that's been cropped. I like this. This is cool. Um, so let's think then how we want to do our puppy stars. This is going to be a little more complicated. So we'll do some extra programming stuff and a little more math. If you just want to skip ahead um, to the next example, you can. Um, this should give you an idea of how you might cut out kind of shapes uh, by creating these masks. But let's go ahead and do something a little fancy. So I'm going to load. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this in preload. I'm going to do it down here, and I'm going to use the callback function that we talked about a couple of videos ago. This is the function that runs, um, that gets run when the image successfully loads. So I'm going to say assets um, slash puppy dot JPEG, and then my function will be called add puppy stars. So this will get run after puppy is done, or after puppy gets loaded. So now I've got my function here. Um, and this is another example where this is useful. I'm loading this puppy image inside draw. If I immediately try to draw puppy here, let's see what happens. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna delete this callback and we'll try this. Now you'll notice puppy doesn't show up. And the reason is um, that it's, remember, uh, JavaScript is asynchronous. So puppy tries to get loaded here, um, or it starts loading and then immediately tries to draw it on screen before it's finished. We have no loop on our draw so that we're not, we're not ever actually seeing it. But by using a callback function that gets um, run after it's finished, now we can uh, actually load the image within draw, which is kind of nice. So um, what I want to do, I want to make these puppy stars, which means I need to make a star-shaped mask. And um, so to do that within my function here, um, I'm going to say star is create graphics. And I've already kind of done some math to figure out how to make this work. Um, there is definitely some trial and error involved in this. Then I want to, so I've created the graphics. I want to do star.fill. Again, the fill color doesn't matter. It's about transparency and opacity. Uh, star dot no stroke. And then I'm going to use begin shape and end shape here. So star, and I always like to do both begin and end shape right away so that I don't forget because it, it just kind of happens. So to draw our star, um, you might be thinking, ah, oh, I can use matrix transformations. This is perfect. I can translate to the middle. I can go up using translate. I can rotate around. Mm, unfortunately, we can't use matrix transformations within begin and end shape. It just doesn't work. So what that means is we have to actually do a little extra math. So um, I'm going to create a variable called angle amount. This is going to be how far apart um, in degrees that my... Um, my points of my star are going to be, well, actually, it's not going to be in degrees. It's going to be in radians um, because all the math that we're about to do is going to be in radians. So my angle amount is going to be 30 degrees converted to radians. For me, 30 degrees is just easier to think that way. So we do the conversion. And then we're going to use a for loop. So we're going to start at zero and we're going to go all the way around till we reach the full circle. So I'm going to say four, uh, angle is zero. We're going to run as long as angle is less than 2 pi. That's a full circle. And then angle plus equals angle amount. Let's move this guy over. Cool. So this is our, um, our for loop. It's going to step by 30 degrees all the way around until it reaches the top. Then we need to calculate the x and y position for, our, um, for each point. And to do that, let's um, we'll talk about what how this is working in a second. But let me show you. So it's let x equals. Um, well, maybe we can do it this way. We can say x is going to be equal to the center point plus cosine of the angle plus uh, the radius. This is kind of our our uh, little formula that we're going to do here. So that's x. So uh, if we want to draw it in the middle of this star graphics. Right, because I imagine like an imaginary, we could draw this on the screen maybe. 
imagine a square, this is star, and we want to, uh, let's try that again. We, <laughs> we want to draw it centered around here, and then we're going to draw an array of these sort of like uh, star-shaped points all the way around. So our um, center point is going to be in the middle, but it's not the middle of this screen. It's the middle of this star mask object that we're creating. So x is going to be equal to star dot width divided by 2 plus uh, the cosine of our angle, which is going to be um, just angle plus, uh, oh, sorry, not plus radius, times the radius. Some of you are probably yelling at your screen right now. Um, so this is how we get the, um, the x position. And then this is sort of like our offset. This is like moving it um, in space. Otherwise, it's going to be relative to 0. So cosine of angle times, um, and we want to go all the way, all the way up, so half of the full size. And then y is going to be similar, star dot height divided by 2 plus the sine of the angle times star dot height divided by 2. So I know this seems kind of weird if you haven't done this before. Um, but once you get used to it, it gets fairly intuitive. Um, so again, it's our offset plus the cosine of the angle times the radius and the sine of the angle times the radius. And then we can do star dot vertex x and y. Now, if we run this right now, what we would end up seeing, um, let's see, can we try this? I think let's try this. Image star zero zero. Ah, that's let's move this over. So I just want you to be able to see this. So if um, now we've done this at 30 degree increments, and hopefully you can see on the screen that what we're getting is a polygon. So uh, I can't do my math and see how many points are. <laughs> it's a little too small. Um, but it's it's like you know an eight-sided or ten-sided polygon or something like that. Um, because we need points inside for it to be a star. We need to draw a point up and then a point in a little bit and sort of like this. Um, incidentally, this is actually how circles are drawn in um, computer graphics. It's just so many points that you don't really see that it's a circle. Um, so what we need to be able to do here is um, create the inner points. And to do that, then I'm going to do star dot width divided by 2, so around the same center point. Cosine of angle plus, uh, we want to go halfway, but you know, if I have two points, let's use that on screen. Yes, if um, I have two points here, I want to go, this one is going to go halfway in terms of my angle here. So I'm going to do angle plus angle AMT, angle amount divided by two times. Um, and then this is our inner radius. Again, you know, you could create variables for these things. I'm just going to say star dot width divided by four. And then my y is going to be very similar. Star dot height divided by two. It's the sine of the angle. And then star dot height divided by four. And then I'm going to add one more vertex at x and y. Oh, and then I also want to add one more thing. It looks like it's not causing a problem, but I'm going to close this shape. And that connects the last point to the first point. And now if we run this, boom, cool looking star shape. That's pretty cool. Uh, but we, what we don't want to do is display this uh, white star. We actually want to use this now as a mask. So I can, instead of displaying this here, I can say puppy.resize star.width star.height. So it's going to make sure they're the same dimensions. Uh, and then puppy.mask star. Whew. OK, so that was a lot. Let's do one more thing. Then let's draw these puppies in place. Um, and we could just say image puppy width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And we get, it's a little small here, but you can see we get the puppy drawn with the mask. Pretty cool. Uh, but actually, what I want to do is draw a bunch of random puppies. And I want to rotate them a little bit so they kind of seem all different. So I'm going to say for i equals 0, let's draw 20 like this. And I'm going to use push and pop here so that I can use matrix transformations. I can translate and then rotate them. And we need some variables. We need an x. So we'll make this random between 0 and width. 
and then the same for y. And then our angle, we'll do random um, between, let's say, negative radians, 45 degrees, and positive 45 degrees. And you'll notice that I'm putting these commands all nested together. That's fine. Um, I, you know, some people don't like having this extra space. I do. I think it's a little more readable. But you could also, you know, create a variable or something like that. And we're going to go to x, y. Remember, you always want to translate before you rotate because rotate is around the origin. It's around zero zero. So if we rotated first, it's actually going to rotate our whole screen and then um, put it in place, and it's going to end up in some really weird spot. And then we can say image puppy at zero, zero. And let's see, it should work. Yay. <laughs> we get a whole bunch of random puppy stars around this sort of cat moon. Um, I think there's a lot of ways that we could improve this, that we could make this work better. Um, it could be more aesthetically pleasing. For example, when this time running it, it's kind of keeping the stars away from the moon. Um, too much overlap maybe doesn't look right. And in fact, actually, it probably should be in reverse order, right? Like the stars first and then the moon on top. Um, so there's a lot of things I think you could start playing with this. You could also um, change this angle size to um, vary how the stars look, all kinds of stuff. So I'll leave that for you. If you want to go into this example and start modifying and hacking this code, um, I'm sure you could like find a bunch of really cool additions. But that's how we can computationally generate a mask image it's a lot here, especially, you know, like this trigonometry with sine and cosine is a little confusing. Um, but even if you just wanted to do odd shapes with begin and end shape or randomized shapes or stuff like that, this can actually be super helpful. So, um, yeah, computationally generated masks.